All right, here we are. Yay. Is this your third time? Third or fourth, right? Um, something know. like that. First in person. Yeah, I, I should tell people we ran into each other at the Psychedelic Science, and I... That's right. I was like, you're much taller. Yeah, yeah. And you I, appear on Zoom. I, I was thinking that. I was like, have we never met in person before? And it was, yeah, Psychedelic Science. Yeah. Yeah. You kind of do a top down. You're a top down camera guy. Yeah. And it makes you look a little diminutive. Oh, if that's the really? Right word. Okay. Oh, compared to My, how tall I have are you? A giant size. Yeah. I I think with men you are supposed to shoot up and lady. But I like to get, <laughs> yeah, I, I like to give on, myself like, like a feminine kind of. Uh, most of the world's softness. looking up at you. Yeah, yeah. So that would be more yeah, accurate. Yeah. I see. I actually have a thing when uh, uh, it doesn't affect me so much anymore. I think I've gotten over it. Um, what kind of thing? But but I have a thing. If if people are taller than me, yeah, it really bothers me. But that's it, probably somewhat rare, is it not? Yeah, it's, it's like confusing to me when it happened. I'm, I'm like almost <laughs> six four, and so yeah. So when someone's like, especially if someone's like over six seven, and I see them, I'm like, what? That's not supposed to. You aren't supposed to be taller than me. It's like a weird, confusing thing that my brain. Do you ever think it's a plight I, of tall people? Is that a thing? Or, or people if, are like, that's you can't have problems. With I wonder being if tall. very short people. I wonder if they meet someone shorter. They're like, what? <laughs> I'm the shortest one around <laughs> here. You? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It might be. I think it's just. I, I think. I, I think part of why i seem taller in person is not just it's not just a camera thing or eyeline thing because i know audiences say the same thing and i think that all of that it uh, is is that the brain just assumes that you're an normal. average height yeah yeah, yeah. Well, that's like people 80 percent of people think they're an above average driver for it, instance oh yeah that's that's the the there, there's a wonderful book the folly of fools um this guy robert trivers who is this very uh yeah, bizarre kind of outrageous type character who has his own I think he's had a couple trips to psych wards and stuff like that some his own neurodiversity and I think some uh some schizo schizophrenic schizotypoid maybe some uh bipolar type stuff interesting guy had had changed the world of um of uh evolutionary thinking uh he he had three pretty big ideas that changed the way that what we, era are we, we talking about, about here like... this is this is probably like 50 years ago when he did some of his really landmark stuff he's he's still alive and kicking uh he's in jamaica um studying lizards because he moved there um to uh he didn't know what he wanted to do first he's going to be a mathematician and then he he's a really quirky interesting funny outrageous guy I'm friends with, i've been to jamaica a bunch and i was already a fan and so i was like oh this legend i'll look him up and he's more peculiar in person he's always uh drinking pretty heavily um <laughs> like, like i think my first time in inter- I had him on my podcast. It was like a, probably a 10 a.m., 11 a.m. interview, and he had... He's on the sauce? He was on the sauce wow. already for that one. Every time I see him, he has a mix of a, a red stripe, a Bailey's, I think. With red like stripe? Like a, a little, like, a little small little flask of Bailey's, wow. a, a red stripe. And then there's another Jamaica drink, but he does the three. But He's he, making up a new drink there. It's like a white Russian with beer. Or yeah, something. <laughs> yeah. It's it's uh, it, it's always off putting. Oh, and red wine, and red, oh, that's the that's other one. That's disgusting. Yeah, mix. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a he's kind of a crazy person. Loves weed. Loves bragging about his weed. Loves I was going to make a weed joke, and then I was like, like, I was like, I don't want Jamaica. It's no, too on but the it nose. is. He you go and visit his house, and he's like, wow. Let me. It's very adorable. He loves to like. Show Show you where he grows his weed at and everything. So he's moderately and he's like paranoid. Eighty-five year old. Well, he was born wine. in. Uh, or, I mean, he he went through the whole era of of like you know weed being illegal, very illegal, and everything else, and him doing it anyway. And and then he like did work with like the Black Panthers and stuff for a while. He's had such an 
interesting life. But wow. he he uh, he moved to Jamaica as an undergrad. Someone was like, "I need help studying lizards," and he's like, oh, "All right, free trip to Jamaica." Got to Jamaica, uh, decided that he really liked Jamaican women. <laughs> And so he's like, I guess I study lizards now. He decided that I and like didn't that. Didn't have much of an interest in lizards, and then, um, and then came up with some ideas about not even based on lizards, based on like watching pigeons and stuff like that. That that uh, that that changed some uh, ideas of evolutionary biology. The reason why I'm talking about him right now is because uh, he he there's this book, The Folly of Fools, which you know there's aspects of it you can take or leave, like any book. But it's a lot about the evolution of self-deception and a lot about those very things of like 80% of people be believing that they're, that they're in the top 50 percentile of drivers, of intelligence, of... of right. Which, uh, you know, I mean, I, I, do you feel you fall into that category? I mean, I, I Are think... Are you better than average? I, I think that we all have aspects of that in... Th like, I mean, I, th I think that it would be impossible for any of us to assess ourselves accurately on any given measure and so and then some of us have like low self-esteem generally and then some of us have it in like certain regards when we shouldn't and so yeah i mean definitely i think the older you get the more i'm like am i that good of a driver <laughs> am i that good of a parallel parker or do i just like like hey watch everybody i'm a parallel park right like why that's a what's a weird thing do you show off like your parallel parking abilities i'm very i'll be honest if there's a car full of people and i have to parallel park i feel pressure but i feel like i'm gonna kill this <laughs> And I'm not no, going to say I'm anything. Like, I'm going to do it in one move and <laughs> see if anyone's like, wow. Yeah, no, I announce it. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I make an announcement that I'm <laughs> hey like, guys, you're, check this, this out. Is, yeah. you're, or, what'd you think of that? for huh? a real treat right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is. <laughs> I, I think so, you know. I, I think that, uh, I, I mean, having experienced... Uh, you know, I've talked in the past about various mental health issues of my own and, and, and mania really, when you come down from it, it highlights just how delusional you can be because you can have, like, I was exceptional at math. I really was. I, I didn't, I, I was horrible in every other, I never, I never cared about school generally. And math was just the one thing that I didn't need to care or pay attention. And I was just the top of the class mm -hmm. every time it was like. It was another thing, like being tall. If someone like had a better test score than me ever in math, I was like, "What? Like that's not how did that wow. happen?" And um, and I was good at teaching it and everything else. And that was like up until calculus and I smoking weed all the time, and then really stopped caring. <laughs> and then you like really needed to actually pay attention to learn calculus. Well, anyhow, you have a manic episode and you start telling yourself stories of like, "How is this happening to me? How am I tuning into these like spe special messages within the universe?" And then, and then you like look back through time to like figure out like, "Well, what's special about me?" And then you go like, "Oh, well, I was good in math, and, the, and <laughs> like, oh, it must be I must be a math genius." That's now figuring out all of these special codes and this these m these new forms of math that other people haven't figured uh -huh. out and uh -huh. and really is just like you, you know you, yeah, yeah, i i had more of a fondness for algebra than a lot of people <laughs> did so so it wasn't i didn't need to like I, I i didn't need to make a lot of effort to be good at it because i enjoyed doing it much right. like much like it's not very effortful for some people to learn a board game because they really enjoy it where it's a nightmare to someone else but what you, the I have a question. I was actually talking to Rod about this last night. If, am I remembering it correctly that you, you had a Mania episode, but it was caught on film? Well, the episode wasn't caught on film, kind of, unfortunately. It was a documentary, right? It, yeah, my, my documentary, Psychonautics, A Comics Exploration of Psychedelics, uh, which is on Amazon Prime, It's uh, we set out to 
um, basically, like, kind of, we go through this in the in the beginning of the documentary, which is it's all true. I didn't really know what I was doing with the documentary. It was just like we knew we wanted to make one, and I was on this tour, the psychedelic tour at the time, and I had an opportunity. It was psychedelic science conference 2017 to interview all these like juggernauts in the psychedelic research uh, community all in one place, and so just filmed all that and then they're like now what and i'm like let's just i'll just do a bunch of psychedelics and we'll film it and like <laughs> it'll be great because i'll show people that these things aren't that crazy and you can even do like more than all you're right. supposed to and more I'll, often and nothing to worry about <laughs> yeah, yeah. and Is this uh, like in a hotel room or where were you at home oh no we went to different like i went to a ketamine clinic for ketamine and then i went to like okay. for, for mushrooms i went there there's a a guy speaking of Jamaica, a guy who ran a mushroom retreat in Jamaica. Um, How did you fund this? And this uh, like... I had a producer that was interested in what I was doing, and he was his name is Matt Schuler, and um, and him and and the director Brian Bellenkoff, they they make a lot of comedy specials. They uh, last year I, I would guess they made like close to a hundred comedy specials. And this like, was they in crank out comedy specials. So he's big into comedy and everything else and has always wanted to do something that's but not twenty seventeen. Something the comedy related but not yeah, yeah, twenty seventeen. That's a very different era in the psychedelic space. Oh yeah. Uh, really not nothing like it is today. Yeah, it's yeah. Still pretty fringy. But I, I went to do ayahuasca to prepare for doing ayahuasca on camera, and that's when ah. I had, and that's when I had my ah. break. Yeah, oh, yeah. gosh. And um, yeah, and it was, and then I was super paranoid. Like it, it uh, basically the filming of the documentary came to an end. I wasn't very helpful in editing it because I was like, I thought everything was a trick, and I like wasn't trusting How long the did this editor go on? and the 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 the, the episode. I mean. Let's see. So ayahuasca, I never quite came down from it. I was very, I was pretty manic and wrapping up enough for my girlfriend to be concerned for like a week before I then did mushrooms at Roger Waters concert. And then that made me just like absolutely crack. And then my girlfriend, exceptionally concerned, trying to talk me into going to a hospital um there was like about a week of that went to a hospital the first time she was able to talk me into like just hospital hospital yeah like tricked myself into like i was just coming up with like bizarre ideas that sounds really rough oh yeah because especially with paranoia i could just think you don't even know there's no one to trust i didn't or get help i should say well, like one of the worst things about it is is that you go like the logic of it all kind of makes sense in a way that's also just horribly wrong at the same time. But it's like you could see how a brain could get to that, um, which is which is that you start coming up with these ideas of like, you know, there's a lot of depersonalization involved and like, oh, this has been a simulation this whole time. Why? what is the purpose of the simulation and why am I the center of it? Because you're kind of defaulting back to these baseline um, cognitive biases, egocentrism being being the single greatest cognitive bias that any species experiences. And, mm -hmm. and so then you find yourself like, you know, once again at the center of this uh, simulation. So why are you at the center? Is it... Are you in charge of it? Is it in charge of you? If it's in charge of you, why? Is it? Is this some <laughs> trick on you? And then if it is a trick and it is like a Truman Show-ish type experience wow. that you're having, then the people that you care about the most are actually the ones who must be the most in on it. They're oh, the ones Jesus. that must be going through that is a slippery the slope. most hoops to like be in on this ploy you know and so it is it's terrifying so then then the people that care the most about you the people that 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 are doing their best and looking out for you the they're the ones that are the most in on it and that's such a dangerous terror so it is compounding into. by oh, itself yeah. in a way but what what pulled you out of that <sighs> The first time meds, the first time it was just meds. kind of taking 
the chemical temperature I'm, down? I mean, a lot of it is just lack of sleep. So what would happen, like the first the first week went to a hospital and then they were like, my girlfriend drugged me there and I reluctantly, like it, you got to catch someone in just the right mood to get, like bipolar people are, um, are notorious for being um, resistant uh, and not open to treatment of, of any kind. Like, uh, like people that are borderline personality will often be like, oh, I'm borderline. Pro- okay. I'll, it's borderline. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll like attend to that or take like the meds or whatever mm-hmm. more likely than mm-hmm. someone that's bipolar. Um, and, and so, uh, yeah, I, so the first time I think it was, I mean, it's a little foggy at this stage, but I know, I know at that time it was just like, you know what it was, I need to, I do need to go to a hospital to talk to a doctor to get them to tell my girlfriend to stop like <laughs> giving me a hard time about like clearly a doctor will be smart enough to understand how genius my idea my ideas are and so then you go to a hospital and then the doctor's like we are not letting you out, out of here yeah. until In like ways, you take the, yeah. like either you can take this sedative that will put you to sleep or I'll call security and wow. <laughs> like wow. we will hold you down and, and, wow and it's like it's terrifying and um and so i did take that i mean it was hard it was hard for everyone my girlfriend and for I'm everybody sure. and um and then i got sleep woke up was able to you know talk myself or talk myself out of the situation or talk to them enough I've since found out that the that the bar to um you know kind of hold someone against their will is like quite high um mm. and and so so if you can if you can demonstrate there's some criteria I I won't remember exactly but it's it's something around like uh if you can demonstrate that you understand what a person is saying that you can, I, I mean, they're, they're not telling you that this is what the test is, but this is what they're about. These are tips if you might be committed Yeah, and you yeah. want out. Yeah, and you want <laughs> out, which is like, I don't know if the psych ward is the best place for someone in a state like that. There's people with clipboards taking notes. There's cameras everywhere. It doesn't help with paranoia. Most people are at least as crazy, if not crazier than you. I don't know. It's not the, it doesn't, it doesn't exactly cool it's things bad, down. bad set and setting. Yeah. yeah. Um, you need to demonstrate that you understand what's being said, like not just repeating it back to them, but like reframing what they're saying. So like that you can manipulate those ideas mm-hmm. and sh- demonstrate that you understand what's being said, mm-hmm. that you can make a choice and that your choice is has some sort of logic like you understand why you're making that decision that right, you're making. Right, 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 right. So there's like you want to hear a really, really crazy example of this? <laughs> sure. I was talking with a eye surgeon friend of mine. This is some people are gonna cringe. This is a horrifying story. Um, trigger trigger warning on trigger uh, warning. descriptive surgeries is my guess. Yeah, I have a friend who 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 uh went to uh um medical school for i'm gonna pull up a picture to show you jesus um the the picture i'm gonna show you is is you're gonna get a kick out of this isn't the horrifying thing um but uh so he went to medical school he became an eye surgeon he kept going to school to get more and more specialized and at first you tell yourself a story that like i'm going to help kids that like get get their uh, nearly lose an eye and now they're going to be messed up for life but i'm going to do plastic surgery and then they'll have a normal life and and that's the story that you tell yourself yeah. and then you get into it and you end up fixing old people's wrinkles to make their uh, eyes look a little bit better and you make a fortune doing it but you're not doing a whole lot of good in in the world really and and so so then you need to think of things that you can give back and what he does is he goes he's in 
Chicago, he goes to Cook County uh, once a week and helps train like other eye surgeons and stuff. And Cook County is like the community hospital there. It's notoriously one of like the rougher. Chicago? Like, yeah. Isn't that where ER was supposed to be? Remember that old TV show? I, I believe so. I yeah, was, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's one of the one of the. Um, I mean, there's like lots of science studies and stuff done there because they're like, it's like such a like lost cause of a place so much that they're like willing to try anything, and mm. and so lots of like new systems and stuff are tried out there. It's a very like guinea pig kind of hospital because they're just in over their heads constantly. And so he is, he goes there once a week and makes the rounds and he's usually the only, uh, he goes in and, and like, uh, there's a lot of things that he does. That's like, he's the only person that comes through Cook County that would be able to do this. So you need to wait yeah. until the Wednesday or whatever. And, um, and so he's like the normal thing that'll happen. He's like, it, like he doesn't ever get called this. This is just routine. It's like many times a day, someone comes in. Uh, they're a mechanic. They didn't put their uh, eye safety uh. on, and they have shards of uh, little shards of metal in their eye. And this, you just like take a pin and and pop it out. That's just that's just your general run of the mill eye uh, emergency. And and then and then he starts getting into crazy stories. And I'll just skip to the craziest one. Uh, which is someone was in handcuffs and they found um, some piece of metal and were able to like start picking at the locks and stuff. And then they, they were able to like use this piece of metal as like a lever, I guess. And they were able to break open um, the handcuffs. And then when they did that and they were having like some sort of an episode. And then when they did that, they uh, swallowed um, half of the handcuff. <laughs> Wait, is this goes like this, actually? That's a like stomach. That's their hip bone? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I was that's... holding it upside down. Oh, my God. So that's inside their stomach. <laughs> that's, inside, that's inside their stomach. <laughs> and, and I was like, I asked him, I was like, how do they even swallow that? That's quite large. That? That's it's like, so large. Uh, holy cow, that's a piece of the handcuff. That's a piece of a That's handcuff. That's like the, the part that goes that, in the cuff with snaps. a little jagged yeah, yeah. It's a large piece of metal inside. Yeah, a jagged edge. Yeah. It went down somehow their throat. It seems impossible. I don't even impossible. know how it fits. Yeah. And then, and then I was like, how that did it, t- how, yeah. how did it get toast. out? And he's like, yeah, they were like, cut they it took out. an x-ray and, and, uh, and the <laughs> gastrologist was like, I'll let them pass it. Like, let That's them pass impossible. it. That's <laughs> impossible. I know. Aren't there like I don't know and several like, hundred turns what? in your intestines? That's like how like like that the, that they need to like like it, it's like a it's, it's like a um you know military paramedic sort of situation at this hospital where where they need to like triage based on Dude, based on they're, need they're... and it's like I'm so busy doing all these other stomach surgeries constantly that we just gotta hope this guy can pass this handcuff. <laughs> through. I think that's more like placing evolution like right you know what let's let nature take care of this one this person if they make it then hey exactly you should be continuing on exactly you You get an award (laughs) better luck next life yeah Yeah. you get to wear that around your neck (laughs) this went all through my body i'd make a necklace out of that it's like a yogic technique where they have the string oh nice yeah yeah (laughs) It's, it's a thing so uh at this point listeners might be wondering why why we're talking about this why why we're talking about this <laughs> why an eye surgeon uh, why an eye surgeon's hearing about that yes. and, the, yes. and the thing is 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 that uh is the piece that they pried it open with they took that piece and then they jammed it in their eye just to add a little <laughs> more color, uh, a distraction. It, swallowed from... this, jammed it in the eye. I don't know if it was like to hide the evidence or something. <laughs> like you're out of the handcuffs. Like you clearly broke the handcuffs. Like, yeah, I don't know what happened. Sir, 
And then, <laughs> it has a lot of blood coming yeah. out of your face. And oh, this. <laughs> and so, and so, like you know, he's walking to this appointment as they're telling him, that, and he's like, <laughs> "What do you mean, like jammed it into the?" Thing? He's like, "Like in its eye, it's like in his eyeball," and they're like, "No, it's in his orbital lobe. It's behind his eyeball." Oh my god! And uh, and he's like, "Well, can he see?" And and they're like, "Yeah, he can." He can see out of that eye still, and he's like, "Oh, so you want? Well, he wants it out, and they're like, no, he wants to keep it because <laughs> it's a <laughs> secret <laughs> chip that's helping him yeah. read minds." Yeah. So he wants to keep it. And, uh, he's like, "Well, this is like this is you know this, uh, this is an optional surgery. This is a volunteer. Like it's not impeding his vision, and I I can't you know I I the." How would it's they not, even take that out? Oh, uh, you can. You, you can, take yeah, your you eye can. out and. Yes, you can. Yeah, just, like, no big, I've yeah, seen he does movies. crazier things. Yeah, yeah, yeah Tom yeah. Cruise did it. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Tom Cruise, did it. Uh, he does all did his he, own he stunts. Some, yeah, he took his eyes out and put other eyes in. Um, and and uh, <laughs> it, yeah, and and so so then, so then they're like, he's like, well, I can't. Because because they can't they can't just operate on your eyeball without your permission if it's not like a life threatening situation because if something goes wrong well, I would now think we get infected blind yeah, yeah. And, he just was he didn't yeah. wash his hands before he shoved <laughs> no, it in there. I he know. Didn't sterilize it well there's a lot to worry about when you've just <laughs> jammed a piece of sharp metal into your eye and you love it there <laughs> you jam it in that is a stuff. conversation starting with a therapist <laughs> yeah <laughs> let's start with this and you go tell me more you go, about... <laughs> no regrets it's still there i, I uh, jammed it in still i uh, still love it <laughs> and and so then he and then and then they're well that was there they're like well we're worried about infection and everything else he's like well if you guys want me to get that out of there then you need to like take the power of attorney away from him which means you need to like have so they brought in like three different psychiatrists wait, to wait, talk this is to the this same guy. guy who's got the handcuff in his stomach yeah that yeah. they're like that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's but cool. the eye. Swallow. We're gonna get some attorneys in here. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, gonna... uh, I mean, I think they weren't at. People swallow things all the time. The stomach's tough. You're meant to swallow like, things. Yeah, You're not yeah, meant to put d- things behind d- your exactly. eyeball. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That should be on a coffee mug or something for yeah. this guy. Yeah. It's a very specific. I'm sure he's dead. Is my the odds that this person is alive today? Extremely low. I don't know. He is I not think he's sitting better in jail, than average uh... as a human being. <laughs> Everybody thinks he is. I mean, that's a hell of a story. You have a story like that in jail. I maybe think he that is. you get to lead. Yeah, uh, maybe he I is think better you than average. Ga- yeah. I think you just get a gang. And they're like, <laughs> like you want to lead my gang? You got a I'm sick of being like the right crazy <laughs> guy all of the time. <laughs> He's the Aussie. It's yeah. really wearing on me. <laughs> Being the craziest person in prison, I'd like to pass the torch. <laughs> uh, um, uh, and and so so yeah, so this is how I found this. Uh, is that like the the psychologist came in and then and then we're like and and then and then they they were like yeah no he seems fine to me, <laughs> which is by their standard of like the the. the what it takes to yeah, but this is like the take test away they the gave power Donald of Trump. Attorney. You know, yeah, it's like, you yeah. draw a circle or something. But you but, know? but that's but that's what to put someone in a psych ward, you need to take away their power of attorney essentially. So it's you, actually for a, the higher, most part, a, a high bar. It's a for, very even high if you bar. Just shove something in your eye and, and swallow it. For me a to handcuff. go to a psych ward, my parents and like family and stuff was there, and they were able to trick me into like giving power of attorney you had to, to sign, my parents. You had to sign something. I had to sign something, which they tricked me into. Like I didn't know that what was happening, honestly, and uh, and so I got I got tricked and and that was after going to a hospital, waking up, being okay because like really it's it's the biggest issue would be sleep, like everything's fun and exciting and big ideas until like a week or two goes by where you haven't slept and then things like really go off the rails and you're hallucinating. Is it because you're not sleeping? 
because unless there's substances involved, I would think your body eventually, you wouldn't have a choice. You would fall asleep. I mean... Like, what's keeping you up? That's a long conversation, but I mean, first, usually the experience of it is, first it starts, everything's like either confusing, intriguing, or very exciting in some way, like you are noticing um, these new patterns that you hadn't noticed before. They're seemingly special messages for you. Every billboard has the me the meaning that you know is like the meaning for everyone yeah. else. Yeah. But then it also has like a special meaning for you. There's a fine line between to, synchronicity there that is. we all experience and it seems somewhat like the same phenomenon. In fact, I like I just don't get to experience synchronicities any. Anyway. If I have a synchronicity, if I walk out of here today and I experience a synchronicity, I go I I have to like look at my calendar, mark it and be like I have about one one week, maybe two, and if I like if if I start having more of these oh, and if wow. they start get, uh, ramping up like that is like within, within two weeks, within two or three weeks, I'll be in a psych ward if I don't figure out how to like navigate my mind. In so right for way. you, a synchronicity is actually a it, harbinger of it like, really it's the opposite of, for, for a lot of us, it's like, Yay, so <laughs> the universe. Like, yeah, it just I'm happened like, to me oh, when we were, no. yeah, I get the little ones with 11, yeah, 11. Yeah, yeah, I we used were made, to, I, was I don't get coffee. to have them anymore. <laughs> yeah, it I'm happened, I was like, while I was saying a particular thing. Yeah. And it's like, oh, that's beautiful, and I know. Yeah, I know. And for man. you, it's a it's a dark cloud. It is a very very interesting. Dark cloud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, maybe one day again. I'll well, t allow t myself. tell me more about that. So yeah. when you, for you, a synchronicity happens, and for mm -hmm. you, it's like now I got to watch out. For what though? What would be the things that would like? It's exacerbating, or it's not, or so. This is connected to the sleep thing. So, I would say. Every time's a little bit different, but I would say, and it's not like I have tons of experience. With it. So I had the first time that it happened that I eventually, after a couple trips to a hospital, ended up in a psych ward, and then, uh, and then a good like, uh, and and got meds, which I went off as soon as it put out the fire. But it did put out the fire, and you don't want to go cold turkey off those meds, but I did. And then, um, and then, just like trazodone or what kind of. Olazapine, I want to say. Like tranquilizers or antipsychotics, mood, mood stabilizers. Yeah, yeah. Those are heavy. Yeah, yeah. And um, and honestly, they weren't that bad, but it also wasn't something – it was tricky because I also knew because I talked with doctors, like the doctor friends and therapist friends. I knew it wasn't like a long-term thing, but mm -hmm. they were keeping me on it more than – I like I should have been switched to like lithium or something like that. I probably want to take in that anyway, to be honest. But um, so synchronicity. I, so so synchronicity. So so uh, yeah. So I'll just say like it's it's happened. I've I've had four like very extreme manic episodes like this. All my other manic episodes have been mania like bipolar two mania, which is very different than than what we're talking about, which is bipolar one. Um, and, and so, so what'll happen is the synchronicities, usually they're pretty exciting at first, or like you've tuned into something yeah. and then that, that starts happening more and more where like, okay, I'm now yeah. seeing these patterns within the universe that other people, and like, this is seemingly guiding in me in some way. And, um, and that's very exciting. And then you start going like, why, well, why is this happening to me? Was it what? What is it that I did? Like, what I'll, I'll often come up with like a lot of time travel ideas, and there must have been something that I got nudged in some way along Wait, the way. So, the, one to... of the first things is I must, it must involve time travel. Yeah, this yeah. First level of logic. Well, I was big into physics for a while as well, and so like your brain will use kind of a lot of whatever your past so in essence history you're is. trying to explain the synchronicity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As so, opposed to being accepted, and and that's that. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, I well, mean, clearly there's a kind of connective tissue here. What is it? Mm -hmm. What is its meaning? Right. Is it more than just this thing? Will it continue? Blah blah blah. Yeah, because well, it starts to come along with like responsibilities too, where it starts seeming like you're controlling uh, like certain things and 
And like I moved my arm this way and then that seemed to like move that squirrel over there, which moved that cloud, which made that bus honk, which scared that child, which uh, and like okay. that was my arm that did mm-hmm. all of that. Yeah. And so it starts getting like more and more connected like that. And so then you're like, well, I better watch <laughs> out. <laughs> How I like move, <laughs> you're right. move my limbs. I don't want anyone getting here. hit by a bus. A lot of squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, so, and so then you're like, well, why? How did I get this power? Mm-hmm. Right. And so like at first, it, often the ideas are like kind of pretty exciting. And then there's like an energy to that that keeps you like up and going. Um, if you start experiencing this, I would definitely lay off coffee first and foremost. Um, and then not just like start trying to like uh, make drawings. And if you find yourself like making drawings and you don't normally find yourself making drawings, trying to solve puzzles of, of the universe, that's kind of a cue that something's kind of starting to get rubbed up. And then but then it's like once there's like this pathway opened up in your mind, at first what it feels like is, oh, you you just you don't need sleep. Like not only am I not sleeping, I'm getting so much done. I've, I've never felt so good in my life. Uh-huh. Like sleep is uh-huh. just this like silly thing that I've been wasting my life doing. And what an advantage I now have that I have like – created some sort of structure in my mind where i don't need sleep like so, other so you people would do. maybe t- drink coffee or do things to not sleep i would also do a little bit of that but mostly it was on the natch mm-hmm. um but uh but it would be like two hours uh, i would i would sleep and i'd wake up within like two hours you know you know like when you go to sleep and you wake up like feeling inspired and get back to the drawings and then you get back to the dry mm-hmm. well you, you, you i'm sure with music and stuff you're like I'm, you I'm wake making... up in the middle of the night and you're like you know what i gotta put this down and and uh and and play this uh, a, a little bit and then and then you're up for an hour or two uh having that like creative space and then you go back to bed it's like that without the going back to bed, mm. um, just always. So that would definitely make things worse if you're in an up and up and up for a long week. And, and, and so then what happens is, is like whatever is keeping you up, like then you're, it's like your subconscious gets, it's like your subconscious has like gained more control of your consciousness than it yeah. normally yeah. does. And it like, it wants to keep that control. So then... Once, like, enthusiasm and inspiration run out, then it will just go after any emotions, salient emotions, that will keep that engagement there. Mm. Uh, and and so, so then that's when, like, it will be, like, anxiety or, like, paranoia. And then often there's, like, uh, it will use disgust a lot, like... Um, like they'll just you'll just be like looking around and and um uh, you'll be walking and and you'll see like a a dog like poop on the sidewalk and like in your mind you're just like uh, you just in your mind's eye you just see the whole journey of the poop and like the way that you just never have before and just this revolting and and it's just like the imagery in your mind's eye will just become like it'll be like horribly violent or horribly just disgusting or it's sexual just kind of amplification or just, any, just on uh, many levels yeah 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 are there analogs in any way to depression when like depression for me in those episodes have, has felt so distorted mm-hmm. and part of you um is aware of that but it's almost like when you're really angry you're aware you're really angry and it's a, you're in this weird state, where, but you a part of you kind of enjoys being angry. And when you're yeah. depressed, like you kind of know it, and you don't you don't really feel in control of getting out of. But you also see it in a sense, like man, nothing mm-hmm. is positive right now. Yeah, yeah. And I know, I I know that a while back that wasn't the case. Yeah. Well, yeah. most things were fine, but right now it seems like every. So I mean, is there even that part of you? I'm just curious if there are any similarities or if you've ever dealt with depression or, or if they're very oh, different, yeah. like that these manic episodes of, of like distortion mentally. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of like it's the same in that it's almost the exact opposite, <laughs> and, and, which is... Instead of up, it's just down. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's... that's uh, 
uh, I, I mean, state dependent memory is, is, uh, is a hell of a thing, which is, which is just that, um, it's a fun, well-studied phenomenon, which is like the environment that, that you're in is, is, uh, is just wherever you're at feels, tends to feel like the way things always are. Mm. Um, or are always going to be, and and when you look back, you I mean, uh, we're the the brain's more of a validator and confirmer than it is, uh, you know, some mm. some objective truth uh, assessing machine. And so, so when you're in a so when you're in a really depressed state and you look back on life, like of course you're going to remember like when things went wrong and all of this, and it's like it's always been this way. It was very testable. You you they have they have people uh, like bi bipolar people or just regular people experiencing all sorts of moods, and whatever mood that they're in, they also ask people like, "How would you say your life has been generally?" And if they're in a positive mood, they tend to be like, "Ah, oh, I've had a good life." Above if average. Above <laughs> average. If they're in a shit mood, they're mm -hmm. like, "It's been meaningless. My whole mm -hmm. my whole life has been misery." So, if, I mean, I you're here in town because you're on tour doing your your show, which yeah. is a largely around psychedelics. Yeah. And you're talking about these episodes and stuff. I mean, you know, some of the indicators that people talk about with psychedelics is this family history of schizophrenia or bipolar. Sort of they ask you, have you or your family members been hospitalized for a mental health issue? And uh, you, looking back or looking now, I mean, you're someone who has enjoyed many psychedelic experiences. Mm, That's a lot what your do. show is about. Yeah, yeah, still do. Which is very funny, by the way. Oh, thanks. Uh, and you said this is an indefinite tour, right? Like people well, can probably catch it somewhere. I, I pretty much know what it, it's basically we're we're making one trip around the entire country maybe doing some european um stuff in australia and and maybe some other international things and then making another trip because a lot of the way that we route things um uh it, it's a lot of times just a certain city won't work out with the timing um especially the, this the first part of the tour kicked off so last minute that we will in the second leg we will go back to every venue that we liked that sold out which has been like every single one so far and then and then we'll add all of the cities that we wanted to go to but missed out on like uh Missoula Montana I mean, how many dates are we talking to. about here um for this show how many dates uh potentially like a few hundred, I think. Wow, it's going to take a couple years to finish. Damn, man! And then I'll be done. But I also, I also have a meeting about making it a special and stuff. And so, if that happens sooner, then I'd maybe just move on a little sooner. So we'll see. But I, I'm at least going everywhere in the in the U.S. Um, everywhere, <laughs> every, every everywhere. Like I, I mean, within a few hours of, of like every any state. City. Oh yeah. Seriously. Oh yeah, yeah. That yeah, sounds every, unbelievably everywhere. crazy to me. But, I, I mean, mean, I'm already. I'm going. Uh, and there's we're, people we're in, in every Boise state right now. Interested in Twin psychedelics, Falls like. Oh, I actually, I my specialty really that I stumbled on in the first tour is is in underserved markets. I, I mean, I actually. I, you know, you were at the Boise show other than their projector breaking and the show starting an hour late. It was a ton of fun. Yeah, but, it was but, great. But, like, it's also, Bo Boise's, like, a pretty cool city for, for where it, it is. And it's like, the urban place of Idaho. So yeah, I would so, think, like, yeah, that's where you would play. So it is, it's a, it's a nice... It's a nice market, but like I'll go to Twin Falls tonight. I bet that will do really well because it's like the Flaming Lips will come through Boise. They right. might not necessarily come well, through Twin Falls. They they don't come through Boise actually. But I hear what you're saying. And but, how but big it, is the venue it, and, in Twin and basi Falls? Basically, uh, all that I'm saying is like there there is a psychedelic audience everywhere, and and it and, and it's booming. And usually. Um, if you find places that like, I, I use the flaming lips as just like, you know, if you went to say my not North Dakota, some city that you've never heard of. Um, and it's an area where like, if the flaming lips went there, they would sell a thousand tickets easily. There's a thousand people there 
interest in the Flaming Lips. Nothing else in that city has anything to offer any of those people. It's a like shithole, like hyper opposite of like anything mm. like artsy or, but there's, there's, you know, curious, creative people everywhere. And those audiences come out like crazy. So I actually do the best in cities that you wouldn't mm. think. Is, is there a certain size though? It's like the city or the met, the area has to have at least a certain population. Yeah. Just for a numbers game. I'm about to find out. So I'm, I'm pushing it and I'm, I have a, uh, I have a couple like 600, 800 seaters in, um, in Billings, Montana, and Bozeman, Montana, and those are small. Those small are like, markets. One I think is like sixty thousand, and another's like a hundred thousand. Um, well, Bozeman's so. a bit more like yeah, that you probably get people. Yeah, I would think because um, it's more liberal it's, and it's doing pretty well. Yeah. Um, Billings is is probably going to be a little bit of a tougher sell. We'll see, but uh, yeah, I'll fi- I'll find out more. But yeah, there's 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 yeah there's there's diminishing returns on what i do to to, you know get the word out and everything else there's only so many people interested in psychedelics in a given area but those those areas that you wouldn't think of those are the most enthusiastic crowds where where if Hmm. if you were like hey where would you think uh like uh you'd go to do a psychedelic show and you'd be like oh maybe san francisco comes to mind like um la new york something like that those are those are going to be like the hardest markets because there's already there's already so much of that a lot of competition and it's expensive to do shows too and it's like there there's people there have plenty to do i do really well in areas where people are just so desperate just for anything (laughs) <laughs> that's that's where that's where I, I like do the a best. Desperate yeah, audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just I'll yeah. I'll see anything. Yeah, that's I, where I do well. If I have to compete with <laughs> anything or anyone, like oof, I don't like my chances. <laughs> but you go somewhere or it's just an entertainment <laughs> desert where they have like no other options for your live savior has arrived. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, what you're doing is somewhat unusual, I think, in the comedy space because you're doing this all on your own. You're you're mm. renting venues, going to venues, taking a show. It's longer than an hour special, you know, of yeah. material. Uh, it's multimedia. If I can get it under ninety minutes, I'm thrilled. It was I, I get close up there, to I start two blabbing. hours. It was about a hundred minutes last yeah. night, pretty easily. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, what I'm saying is like it. It's. It, I think it's more work to kind of put on a show, mm-hmm. start to finish, under the, your name. And as opposed to doing even an hour long set at a comedy club, like headlining. Oh yeah, a um, comedy club would just show up and walk on stage. Well, and... it's got to be. It's not to diminish an hour set. That's that's mm. yeah, that's a lot. But I'm yeah. just saying, isn't you're kind of charting your own path? That I would imagine that's a bit unusual in the comedy oh, space. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I mean, you're really I mean, just going for it on your yeah, own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everyone thought I was crazy for doing it when I started back in like 2015. And now they're all like, and they're Damn like, good it, luck with that. And now, the model. And now, yeah. and now they're all like, people hit me up constantly, like, hey, what's your secret? What do you? I'm like, well, the secret yeah. is like a lot of secrets. I've been doing it for eight I years. I moved my arm. And that the squirrel was, moves. <laughs> and the bus almost hits That's the child. The that makes yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have magic powers. I was always really good at math, I'm and I figured chosen. it all out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm the chosen person. Yeah, obviously. Good luck. <laughs> uh, just uh, be a math genius and be chosen by the universe, and you should be just fine. <laughs> Uh, I would imagine, though, comedy's so hot right now. It's having a great moment, and that um, just seems that you figured out. It's just cool. You have your own path. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. It's it's uh, it's fun and scary and all the things. But I, you know, the the thing is with the way that I built things is because I was a, a, a lot of people at this point don't even know that I was just like a regular like fairly successful comedian that was on late night and doing all that and i was like you've been really... doing this a while yeah, yeah i mean 2009 shane was a was a stand-up comedian with a lot of buzz that shorter some hair people was like this guy's gonna be the next big comedian and then like shortly after that i got into science stuff and people were like oh why'd you do that <laughs> i wish you would go back to telling your regular jokes again and i was like i don't care that's not what i'm doing um but but before that, when I was like a regular comedian, it was like, 
every club was it started hurting my act because I couldn't take the same chances on stage because it was like I need to have this club rebook me next year at this time for for me to have an income and keep growing a base and everything this club needs to like me i can't have negative comments on comment cards so i can't they do I can't comment take cards like, at comedy clubs oh my god comedy clubs are comedy clubs can be really shitty some of them are awesome but yeah some huh. some of them are really crappy yeah so it's not just like about what the bookers into it like they're like it we want to know what the audience thinks. I don't know how much they pay attention to that, but uh, I, I mean, if I were a club, I wouldn't want to read the comment cards. I'm sure most of the comments are like, well, you charged drunk. me $20 yeah. <laughs> for these mozzarella sticks that are the worst thing I've put in my mouth. That has to be the majority of the negative comments have to be about their food and whatnot. But um, but yeah, uh, but what what happened was now like, you know, I was at the I was at the knitting factory. Um, it was a fantastic venue. The projector broke and created a delay, but outside of that, it was an amazing, beautiful space. I really liked it. And um, you know, if if uh, if next time around I don't like the deal that they offer me, I go like I actually don't need you. like this. I can just go to a different tree fort music hall. Like I can, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just go to the next place like it doesn't yeah. cool uh, no mm -hmm. worries i'll just go over here so like you can like give me a higher percentage or and and so like i i very much i'm in in wow. charge in that way but things can go i mean i've seen it again and again things can just go away at any time whatever has buzz at a given moment whatever marketing strategies i've in the eight years that I've been doing producing my own shows, like I mean, social media always changes the various strategies and everything else, and uh, it it changes. I I mean, I have a person who's just basically their full time job is just like, how do we get butts in seats? Like, what sort can of we marketing? Do? What do we? Yeah, what can we do on social media? What ads can we run? What local PR can we do? What various like organizations can we reach out well, to seems for like they're doing a good job promotion i mean yeah. yeah you're selling yeah yeah and so so yeah and then i have and i i mean i have a i have a good product usually like when i started i was like i was like i don't market i don't that's someone else's job i don't do the business i'm an artiste and all of this and and I put all of my work into writing and developing my skills, and I'm grateful that I did that. But uh, but it was always, and it's a bit of a cliche that the people that are that are good at producing shows are not good comedians, and comedians are not good business people. Mm -hmm. And that is like because both those things are hard. Except Kevin so Hart, to maybe. do both <laughs> is a hard thing to totally. do. And then some thing, and then some people. And this is what I finally started trying to do reluctantly after I already had, you know, over 10 years under my belt is figuring that aspect out of it. And when you and when you do it and when you can fill those seats and then also have the experience and skill to give people a good show it is like the whole package and so i'm not saying this is bragging i'm saying like i'm it's been a I'm, long journey to get there. it's been a yeah. long journey and i'm yeah. like i'm like still a nobody that is like you know i'm a little bit scrappy in terms of figuring out how to do this and most people that come to my show they had never heard of me before really? they like see a poster or whatever i would say two-thirds of the audience they just we're before, interested like, in the they subject saw or comedy, my marketing or whatever else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I've done the same with the science shows that I do. That's same remarkable. thing. It's not just like the psychedelic show. It's just I've carved out a niche of like creating these specific themed shows and wow. you know putting together a marketing package and preview videos and things like that for people that get people curious and then they show up and I deliver and then they tell their friends when when I come back. How much time do you have to put into admin? 
Oh, I mean, it's most of my day. It's it's more of my day than anything else. Isn't it's, that? Do you ever feel burnout on that? That you're just like, I'm man, I'm just currently never like looking for an not... executive assistant. I had I had one for like I had an assistant for six years. I mean, you have someone helping with marketing. I'm assuming is there an agent involved? There is now. It so used to be me and my marketing person. So I had a full team. I had a bigger team before COVID, and then yeah, I, I mean, for those who are interested, we, I think we talked about this a little bit in our very first episode together in 2020 yeah. right when covid hit yeah yeah and go back and it was, uh, yeah it was one you're doing the science it was tour. one of the saddest things for me it wasn't me being out of work it was having to like, yeah, i remember you saying that. that depended yeah. on 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 income from me and trying to keep them afloat and and rework everything um so yeah so i have i have right now i basically i have a a social person and i have a uh that that does like outreach and stuff and then i have um for local groups and things and then i have an agent that also like helps with we're starting to put together like after parties and things like that and do uh like sponsorship deals and things yeah and then i have uh i have a new product line that i'll share and another people can just follow me and i'll be making announcements yeah. soon that are exciting but I can't. You can put it in your mouth. I'm 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 not I'm not <laughs> sure what I can say about it legally just yet till we finished a few more conversations. Um, but that's coming out September 26th to 28th, and then um, and so yeah, I'm currently in the market for. I I want it'll be an assistant that if they're good enough will become an executive assistant. But is the and idea then, that you would then have a little more time? The idea is I want to like. In the evening, have an email that's like, here's everything that you need to do tomorrow. Here's the plan. Here's what's being done on your behalf. Here's what's being delegated. And all those conversations, then, maybe some of them on your behalf, because that's the thing. Yeah, so many yeah, yeah. Things. But I still need to know they're being done. Otherwise, it's the thing yeah. that like, I wake you don't up in the track middle of people night tracking. And, yeah, that's yeah. I have trouble with that. Yeah, yeah. And so so I have that and then I, and then I have I have a I have a I have artists that I work with. I have a VJ that uh does the show and then I have a I have a graphic design person who's like it, I I'm starting to will probably be full time pretty soon. Also really? Wow. Web design when you say full time, you mean like they're working 8 hours a day for you? And pretty soon they will be with just in the, graphic with, uh, design starting starting next month yeah yeah but also like probably doing some stuff for social videos and stuff i just hired someone i if people look at my social i don't do any organic um reach stuff so i'll probably start doing organic content because i'm also starting my here we are podcast up again slowly and so so that's all it's Are you gonna yeah, get on threads it's it's definitely i'll i'll have like I'll have over ten people working for me wow, within okay. a month or so. So what's what's the miracle outcome? Like where if uh, several years from now, five years from now? Well, honestly, like the psychedelic stuff is something that I reluctantly got. In. I wasn't sure if I was going to get back into doing psychedelic comedy during COVID. I had a lot of like mixed feelings about yeah. my own relationship with psychedelics, the psychedelic community in general. And, um, and really it was psychedelic art that sucked me back in. I, I reluctantly took a MC gig for this, this oh, yeah. conference, did, um, Meet Delic. Delic. Yeah. And, and Vegas. And it happened to be at this area 15 place in this, in this, one of those Van Gogh exhibits, the 360 mm -hmm. degree space. And I'd already been before COVID. I had, I had have like two projectors with me and stuff and I would set up things and, and I was trying to do multimedia stuff anyway. And when I saw that, I was like, you know, that would be an interesting project to take on. If mm -hmm. I could like take, because I've always liked working with the artists uh, in the psychedelic community. So if I could take something like that on, that would be a fun project to put together. And then I did it. And, and it's, it's built it's built for one of those spaces, but we tour in the road with a normal screen place and so that's what got me into it but i i don't i definitely i think after this tour i wouldn't be surprised if i never do a psychedelic show again i also wouldn't be I surprised mean, if 20 years, years yeah. from now uh, we 
We Everything are, comes back. Uh, but, you yeah. know. But uh, I'm... I miss, I haven't been doing any of my science communication stuff for about six months. I've done like very little of it and I miss it quite a bit. It's something that's more important to me. The other thing is, is that I've always been uh, hyper conscious about pigeonholing myself as like this psychedelic comedian. Yeah. Because I'm so much more. And, um, and now I'm just like, you know, after this tour, I'll have enough money that if I want to rebrand myself to do whatever, I, I can do that and I'll be... I never cared about money before COVID, and now I'm like, now I'm going to make a bunch of money and make sure that never feel more secure. that I'm never living in my parents' basement <laughs> again, no matter what happens <laughs> yeah. to to the world, and uh, and and have a team that feels secure and everything else. And so now I'm in a position where I'll be able to rebrand myself. So I'll probably finish this tour, make some specials, and then and then do uh, some science shows that I'm far more interested in. Yeah. Well, okay. Just a couple. Are we good with time? Another yeah, I'm, um, I'm. I'm in no hurry to do anything. Uh, a little sciencey, but or not. But I, I just want to be remiss if I didn't ask you about music and psychedelics. Yeah. Like, sort of your thoughts on it. Is there a galaxy brain time? No. No. Yeah. But you know, I'm making a doc on that subject. It's, I think I told you about. It. It's called Music for Mushrooms, and well, uh, you're being filmed yeah. right now by another camera. Uh, this is uh, <laughs> this is wonderful. Yeah. I got to send you my ketamine playlist. Sure, please. Yeah, please. I, well, I played you one of the songs the other the other oh, night. Oh God, that was what was that? That was weird. Uh, yeah, in a yeah, way. yeah, yeah. In a good way. It had all these high I, frequency I, like I, ADM yeah. things and then, like, going on, uh, and then, like, like a, a child, child voice and stuff. In a it's like very. Cre- it's something that I like to throw in like halfway well, through. People a are going to want to know trip. what it is. You know the title or the artist. I can. I can sh- look it what, up. What, what if I share the whole play? Because here, yeah, I just I'll want people to experience. The way it's meant the to be experienced. The opposite of East Forest for a cat, basically it, it, another it, polarity. Uh, yeah, Let's yeah. Let's do it. Because <laughs> I, I, I want people to have a full ketamine experience, have it, and then and then be so, they'll know what song we're talking what about as soon as it happens. What he's saying is he's going to drop this in the middle, I'm sure, of a journey. You're going to be like, what? What? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> exactly. And it's meant to have that effect at, at, the, at the perfect time. That's... I, I honed a playlist over hundreds of ketamine experiences, and it's delightful. Oh, I'd, I'd um, love to hear that. Yeah, I'd love yeah. to hear that. I always like to hear different perspectives. But the yeah. role of music, you know, it's, it's a big thing, and it always has been, and I just feel like it's not given as much credence these days as maybe it should. And uh, I don't know if it's just any, any thoughts or anything you've come across in your your uh, travels or musings or personal experience about, like, the role music plays in not just a psychedelic experience, but just sort of like in transformation in your brain and like our lives. Oh, I mean, so I am, I don't, uh, so there, there's this big five, um, this, uh, uh, this is, you've heard of like Myers Briggs and stuff, uh, yeah. right? This is, so that's how uh, academics don't use that anymore. It's kind of like been scientifically, like, kind of not the, the internet ruined it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, and, and it was never really tested that much before it came out. But, but they, they use this big five that is, is, uh, no one pretends that it's perfect, but essentially, I, I really enjoy the methodology of it, which is they took. They took basically every every way that you could describe a personality and surveyed people on those things, and they started then they started seeing where there was correlation. So if someone happened to be uh, very tidy, it turned out that they tend to be punctual as well. Not always, but like okay, and then we'll we'll cluster the and then they tend to be organized as well. So we're going to cluster those traits into conscientiousness so that's one of the big five so it's conscientiousness uh agreeability um neuroticism which is like your your uh, uh low emotion a- affect how susceptible you are to low emotional states and then there's um extroversion and openness and so so it's it's nice because you can kind of understand where you are on any one of those with just hearing explained what they are and then but then you can really dive into it and and get more analytical as it as it uh, you know it gets endlessly fractal like more complicated, and so uh, I'm a little low in agreeability. And uh, I think and, you're agreeable. Uh, oh, thank yeah, you. Yeah. I think I've gotten more agreeable. I think you're above with age. average on agreeable. Oh wow! 
Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, most people are just like in the middle on most of these traits, and, and they're careful to say that there's no good or bad, and there's evolved reasons why but we know there go is. along yeah. a spectrum. <laughs> there, there are ones that like predict more success or predict uh -huh. being liked more and that sort of thing. And um, people tend to like happier people more, that sort of thing. Um, but uh, what's interesting is, and I used to be much lower in agreeability than I am, but, uh, but I, I, w I was taking this class on personality research once, and this, and this just hit me, and it, uh, it, and it resonated with me so much, uh, and, it, and it's applicable to my music taste, which is people that are low in agreeability um, tend to just generally not like most things. But when they like something, this, oh, they this obsess like, me. Yeah. Uh. like it's crazy, and it's it, it's almost as if, and the, the, and this isn't this is a metaphor, but it, 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 rather than like some accurate scientific thing that's about to pop out of my mouth, uh, but metaphorically, it's almost as if we all actually have the same units of like agreeability or enthusiasm or whatever and people that are lower in, in, in agreeability are just like more more discerning about right. when they're using it yeah. and so then when they find something they're like <gasps> i'm dumping my and, chips into that and so that's the way that i am with music i actually don't listen to that much music i don't find new music very often and then like once a year i'm usually like <gasps> and and so um my my biggest obsession is Aesop Rock, uh, which is not Aesop Rocky, uh, who is more popular and <laughs> was named. Didn't, can, yeah. I apparently didn't know there was an Aesop <laughs> Rock. Right. Uh, and, <laughs> and sounds like siphoning was, uh, streams there. Yeah. I know. <laughs> and, know. That's a thing. Like People are like to spell it slightly differently. Yeah. And then people out there are so stupid. They just yeah, like, I've been yeah. listening to Beyonce for years. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> Beyonce. It's not, not even her music. Yeah, it's like it's you know Bay Beyonce <laughs> with like an accent or something. That's it's like shitty beats. <laughs> well, he streams. Everybody says really it's good. Well. I don't know, but uh, yeah. Well, a Aesop Rock, he's he's really interesting. He has uh, uh, one thing I like is, is I'm rather insecure about my um, uh, my vocabulary, and and he has. He has testably the uh, the uh, the largest vocabulary like in music. Um, they they more than like Eminem. He was always known for that. Yeah. It, so they they actually did they did a um, they analyzed like every every rap album and then just looked at the the diversity of words used within uh, a given album. And yeah, it was like Lil Wayne on the on the low end, and then <laughs> and then you know the the upside He's down you shaped distribution or whatever and then and then um and then Eminem was was way on the other end of of mm -hmm. uh using the most words and then way 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 off the chart like double that number of words as Aesop mm -hmm. Rock in a, in a class of his own but he doesn't just he doesn't do it to be showy it's just like truly who he is and uh and and when you first listen you like none of it a lot of times just none of it makes sense and a lot of it is just him rapping to himself so it's like inside jokes to himself that like you really have to mm -hmm. like know his life situation and his whole catalog like he really doesn't care he's just in a cabin by himself in Oregon and where um, and like uh I think he's outside of Portland yeah no and way. he's like into skateboarding and stuff and and but he is uh he has isolation and depression issues clearly and is like quite open with them and has like rap about like going to therapy and stuff and and he has stuff that like i've had things where i've listened to where it's because a lot of times it'll take me like 20 listens to understand like what he's even saying in parts and even that i'm not getting all of it it's like it's poetry you know and then and sometimes i'll just be listening and i'll hit some i'll just hear something that just like explains something from my childhood which led to this which led to this which led to this that know, i'm man. like oh but it's and that, <laughs> he that, could be that's, a gateway <laughs> that, that's not a synchronicity that that's more just like uh, feeling heard or something okay. and, and uh, being seen and which is a different feeling. I mean, where's the line if like the lyrics like says Shane, 
Oh uh, yeah, and if it's your name Shane or your there. mother's name well, or something, that you're is like, with wait music, a minute. I'll swear, like it, when I'm manic, I'll swear, like I'll be listening to music. And I'm like, what is this song? I haven't because I I think it'll like even fuck with just like what you're hearing because because you'll be sitting there right, in right. the car and it'll be like <laughs> it'll be like. There's a chicken across the street. There's a chicken across. It has like a chicken's like literally Moving across your the, elbow. Uh, uh, Moving like, my wait, left arm. Wait, that's, why is it singing about a chicken being across the street? And there's like literally a chicken. That's the most random thing. And, and it's like, this is not just a random thing. And like as you're having this. And, uh, yeah, that's. That's a that's more of a synchronicity. This is this is more yeah my poetic. That, that's that's my because I don't like poetry generally, and so that's 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 like my relationship with music is I just I find a thing and I get so incredibly obsessed with it. Um, well, has music played a big role in any of these voluminous, copious amount of psychedelic journeys you've had? Like pretty much different... always. I mean, most of most of the best and biggest trips that I've had have been by myself. Um, before I started doing um, like full on psychedelic comedy shows, I mostly just ate mushrooms by myself. <laughs> I didn't even know. Like, I mean, I guess I'd heard of Burning Man. You were doing you know, research ten years ago or whatever. <laughs> it paid off. I, I, <laughs> like, honestly, I just loved mushrooms in particular. I was up for whatever, but mushrooms in particular, I just loved so much, and I just had such a personal relationship. And then the more experienced I got, I found that like, uh, if I eat mushrooms with other people. Whether they ask me to or whether there's any sense of obligation, I will just subconsciously feel some obligation to be like the guide and the trip sitter and, and whether it's warranted or not. I'll just have that in me. I'll be like attending to like, oh, does everyone have water? Are we like, what time is it? Where are we in the trip right now? How's everyone feeling? Do we want to go outside instead? Does everyone want to go for a walk? Like, yeah. And it's just... It, I, that that's its own sort of fun, um, and I enjoy that. But the really special ones by myself, and uh, and generally, it would be I'll just find some David Attenborough documentaries to put on <laughs> the TV, put it on mute, and then and then play whatever music. That, like I'm I'm a bit of a cliche. Pink Floyd has been a huge, huge part of my life, a big part of many of my trips. Oh, I should play for you. Uh, I have Pink Floyd quadraphonically right here. <gasps> you ever heard it? No. It'll blow your mind. Beca well, sidebar, but like, it's it, they made it quadraphonic. Yeah. Right? And you'll hear like like the money song. The uh, dong, ching, ka ching, ching, ka ching. The reason there's four of them is because of the. You'll hear the music is different. Like, they're, you're, that's why they did four of those. Oh, that's why that thing's here because they wanted it to go bounce. Like, <sighs> it's it changes the album, big time. Wow. And I have like a, this is an Atmos system, but that was just quad. And you can you, you have to hear a what, little bit of it. Well, what about I, I absolutely will. What about um what about um um live at Pompeii? I don't Did have that, that, but um, we could probably get it. Oh man. That is special. So, Live at Pompeii, I think, is the best co concert album that there's ever. Are you familiar? I haven't listened. I, now I'm going to definitely listen to it in full because. It, well, the story of it's delightful too. Is is during Woodstock, where just like the who's who of this and that are all going to this big concert in Woodstock, and it's yeah. going to be this and that thing, and and Pink Floyd is like, yeah, pass, <laughs> and then they went to <laughs> these ruins in Pompeii and played a concert to nobody. I love site-specific music it, events like that. It was that. so incredible. That's so bad. Yeah, and just yeah. recorded it. And just recorded it, and it's absolutely amazing. Yeah. Wow. So good. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, you're you're gonna love it. So music, you you like to, kind of your ideal is journeying alone with the Nature Channel on mute, 
and music. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm surprised you're like looking at a screen. It's usually just like. Oh you know. no 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 no! I I like to I like to have a lot of different options, and so usually oh, I have mindfolds, I and then I I, I like to have the availability, but I want to have everything set up so I don't need to like figure out buttons oh, on a remote not. or whatever. Well, like would I really say go for it. Like was... I don't want to have to use my phone for any oh, reason. Totally. Yeah. I have I have separate voice recorders. This is another. Oh. Um, because they have the voice recorder apps on your phone. So you're like, well, why would I want one of these old school voice recorders that I'm just going to use? You want it for tripping. That's why. Yeah. Because it'll remind you to take notes. Um, you don't need to stop your music or use your phone um, yeah. to use it. And it's, here's a, I, I came up with this. It was after a, a ketamine trip where I got frustrated because I wanted to make a voice note, but I had to like find the app yeah. in my phone while I'm on a, uh, you know, peaking on ketamine, and then I hit record, and it stops the music, and then That's I'm terrible. like listening. To Buzzkill. It was it's such a. And yeah. afterwards, I was like, no, I'm, I'm. And I found, I was in Raleigh, and it was like four in the morning. I looked up at Amazon, like boy, I'm like, do they do these even exist still? <laughs> eBay, man, I bet you get one for like five bucks, dude. Twenty three dollars new off of Amazon same day delivery. I ordered it. It was to my place by eleven in the morning. <laughs> the world is so weird. It is because it's like yeah. You you need a toe? I'll get you a toe. You need a voice recorder? It, and it was so because it, it's also like an impressive piece of technology that is so completely useless today like like we're now so advanced past this impressive piece yeah. of technology that it's surprising that it still exists yeah and it does exist and you can have it for the price of a pizza delivered uh, by almost 11. just as fast yeah almost just as yeah. fast as pizza <laughs> and as cheap it's like like that would imagine bringing a voice recorder back like <laughs> A uh, hundred years ago, even a thousand years ago, you're a wizard. But even well, you, you would have years stolen ago. a soul, yeah, for sure. I, two of my songs are voice recordings. I would often record myself right, like at the end of the trip. So, I mean, you're oh, in it, that's delightful. But you can talk, yeah. And yeah. it's more like it's essentially just I'm trying to rem give myself notes, yeah, yeah. And then later on, I sampled it, and one of them is one of the most popular songs that I remember thinking like. This is this is too vulnerable, and people are gonna make fun of me. And this is just a guy, you know, tripping. Yeah, but eventually, yeah. it's like ah, I think I really edited it down, so it's really just maybe yeah. twenty-five words. I love that. But it it actually holds, I think, some kind of vulnerability and authenticity that we're yeah, all kind of searching yeah. for. It's like I don't care what people think. I'm just gonna. This is That's... what came to me, or this is what I felt, or this is what yeah I heard. I love that. Yeah, I mean, that's. Yeah, music is it. It helps so much. I mean, have you done DMT without music? I haven't it's done a, any of these things without music. It's a yeah. different experience. It's like Wee! it's, a, it's a, it, it'll leave you like wanting if you have experience with DMT and and music. I mean, they're their own thing, and it's cool to just have this trade experience too. But I mean, there's a reason why if you listen to like classic Icaros or whatever which is like it, 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 as much as my skeptical side will be like just anything that's like woo woo or tradition like or whatever I, I tend to just like fires up a lot of questioning in my head even when I don't want it to but uh, I, I can't help myself uh, but Icaros if you're on ayahuasca there's there's like there's reasons why I mean, I mean the brain loves being surprised so you're hearing like like this predictable and then out of nowhere just like where you're like what the fuck was that sound but it like lights off this this whole like brand new image in your mind because your your brain's like quickly trying to make sense of whatever the fuck that surprise was while well, you're also in an altered state and it's it's fun and it's so it likes amazing to be, likes to turn corners and yeah it loves to turn corners and so to to have that to add that uh, to have music add that little extra bit of um benign surprise uh during because you know it's surprises during a trip can be awful they can they can make things turn real bad but music has that delightful like benign surprise that that really often um 
can can heighten the experience quite a bit and 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 you also don't i mean you're you're experiencing kind of this synesthetic state which is which is kind of crosstalk between uh between senses that that your brain has otherwise kind of compartmentalized to make um to make navigating our our perception uh, more manageable, but it's, uh, I mean, all, every baby is born with kind of like into this blob of perception and then, and then your brain gets categorized. This is a shape and this is a color and there's this synaptic pruning that severs connections between the, those categorizations to, to make processing easier. And some people, the, that synaptic pruning doesn't happen in a certain region, and then they see music as color or whatever, and this is synesthesia. Well, so, psychedelics, psychedelics stimulates the, that. Same, so you get to experience this, uh, like so, uh, suddenly music has color attached to it, right. and maybe even sometimes a smell or something like that, and uh, depending on... It's like you get to experience the wider bandwidth and spectrum of music that's always there, but yeah. our perceptions just need to be tuned to hear it all. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't know. So how you could could, that not be good? I mean, you can, like, if we were just in this room, if I was just, like, in this room in just silence tripping it also i mean looks like padded walls and stuff so it would be a little <laughs> it's, freaky it's, it's white and natural light <laughs> yeah, yeah. sky it's but, not so bad but there's uh, a bed up there outdoors in nature i would say but that's the that's the same sort of thing where it's uh your your perceptions maybe are heightened a, a, a little bit so now you're hearing like a rustling or some little critter or something like that more than more than you usually would so you're getting those kind of like benign surprises uh again um but yeah m music's been a very big part of my psychedelic journey of course yeah i mean have you ever done uh, have you done much nitrous at all uh, what's I mean, what's much uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i don't so want to be like nitrous yeah. so so like let me put clearly... this way i had a friend who once told me that you should experience nitrous oxide with MDMA, and he said it's um it's interesting, and I remember doing it and with very clean nitrous and going into the space I went into and being just like angelic crystalline understanding one and it's like completely blown away. I remember hearing his voice saying interesting. I was like, oh, interesting. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that's one way to put it, buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it is interesting. <laughs> And I told him, it's like, dude, underselling. Yeah, Why yeah. is this? Well, it is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I, I, I don't know how many audio hallucinations that you've experienced it's on very Nitrous. Strange, it's, yes. it, but it's like, it's like, oh, this is... Very it, strange. There <laughs> was, this is how people got into becoming DJs. They did Nitrous, <laughs> heard these sounds, and were like, oh, I'm going to replicate Dentist. that yes, sound. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of dentists yeah. and DJs That's where it all began. There. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's where dubstep starts. It just sounds like you're at the dentist, actually. <laughs> it's true. It My friend so Michael funny. told me that. We read a Burning Man, like, 07. He's like, this is basically just, like, dentist music. <laughs> nailed it. That is nailing it. Yeah. Because it all started with nitrous. I mean, it had, to, like, when I do nitrous and I hear the, because you can just be out in, 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 like, nature or something, and it'll just start going, womp, 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 oh, yeah. womp, womp, yeah. womp. Yeah. I'm like, oh, this is, <laughs> this is where all of DJ music came from. Um, have you ever combined nitrous oxide with uh ketamine yeah it's you it's a, yeah. it's not the same as like with yeah. the mdma like you trip yeah like, seriously trip for a long time yeah like an hour. Yeah. yeah it's a strange interaction hey yeah, just yeah. disclaimer none yeah, of these we... are things you should be trying without <laughs> doing your own research or i don't know anything about what i'm yeah, talking about yeah. here I mean, I do find mixing ketamine with anything. I, I don't know. I find ketamine. It's not using my bag to, to do these mixes. But, I, I, uh, I like. I like to. I do. I. I don't mind doing ketamine like before the onset. Like I don't like the first bit of uh, of the mushroom experience. And um, and so if I gobble mushrooms, then do ketamine. Huh. Then it's like, oh, then I don't need to. Then I'm just 
off on ketamine for an hour. I don't need to experience the unpleasantness of the early part of a mushroom trip. And then I get out and I'm like a little, mm. it's like a groggy mushroom trip for a minute, but that wears off soon enough. And then I'm, mm. Interesting. I'm tripping. Yeah. Never heard of that one. McKenna would lay out joints in front of him and just sit there and go through his joints on his mushroom experiences. Really? Yeah. According to him, he'd be in the dark alone i i don't know he know he didn't put on music or anything which i thought was odd but he hmm. says he he couldn't imagine doing it without marijuana huh huh i i mean it helps a little bit for someone that for well, someone he smokes that doesn't all day like every day weed. i mean you know also there's that like right. it'd be stranger for him not to be high yeah yeah yeah, yeah i mean i think we can help I, I don't like I don't like marijuana at all, and I I I have had pretty positive experiences with mushrooms and marijuana. Well, thanks for talking. Yeah, it seems like a good place to end. I want to play that Pink Floyd. Um, so the tour is on the road, and I recommend people seeing it. It's a lot of fun. There's and it's uh, unique. live visuals and and things mm-hmm. with my BJ Michael mm-hmm. Strauss uh, bringing everything to life in real time. Yeah, and. I mean, what's fun is partially that if you've had any experiences of any kind in the psychedelic space, there's, it just feels like you're being fed all these, like, we know the jokes, or it's like all these things. I'm like, yep, yep, been <laughs> yeah. there, yep, been there. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. I think even if you hadn't, there's a lot of things are cultural memes. Yeah, it's still yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah, you won't yeah. be like, I don't know what they're talking about. It's, yeah. it's, it's very approachable. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's by design. Yeah, thanks for, uh, thanks for chatting. Thanks for having me. All right. Thanks, Shane. Till next time. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna end this here. All right. You end this. You stop the recording first, right, and then let it process. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was looking for. I can't. There.